Hey, yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Bros Talk MMA. I'm your host, Utica, undeniably illest cat around, huh? a.k.a. Mr. Make This Pick Real Quick. I'm here with my bro host extraordinaire. You know what it is. It's Ray Bucks. It's Chico Jordan. It's Mr. Hand me my belt. Give me my crown. Ask your mama about me. <laughs> We're here to cover this weekend's fight night card. But first, before we get into that, we have a special guest in the building, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Certainly. My name is Leo, and it's an honor to be here. Thank you guys for having me. Hell yeah, um, hell yeah. Thank you for being for with this card. Hell yeah, that's what's up, that's what's up. Uh, um, I'm not sure, like, my man needs some monikers. It's Leo the GOAT. Leo that knows shit, you know what I mean? Leo's gonna make something happen. Leo the wise. Y'all might want to, okay. yeah, Leo the wise. Yeah, okay, he said it. You know See? what I mean? See? He said it. That's all we needed. I just needed some, or you know, something organic. You can't be over here knighting people, bro. Shit. You ain't even got parlay yeah. right. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 I remember the last time you got a parlay, bro, let alone you lost a card not too long ago. Shut your damn mouth. You out here trying to give monikers. But that's besides the point, on folks. on that record, man. 13 fight win streak. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, though. <laughs> so we're going <laughs> we're gonna to be covering this weekend's card. It's going to be a fight night card headlined by Flyweights. We got Brandon Royval going up against Tatsuro Tyra. It's going to be a 13-fight card, so we're going to start things off in the heavyweight division. We got Chris Barnett going up against Junior Taffa. We got Barnett coming in there 2-2 two two in the UFC, 23-8 and eight overall, and are 3-2 and two in their last five fights. We got Taffa coming in. They are 1-3 and three in the UFC, 5-3 and three overall, and 2-3 and three in their last five fights. Me, myself, I'm going to be going with Barnett in this fight. Uh, they're going to be the older fighter by 10 years. They're going to be the longer of the two um, in reach. They're going to have more MMA experience uh, and are very athletic and have a pretty decent gas tank for their size. Um, Tafa, they're a powerful striker, have a pretty extensive kickboxing background. Um, but in my opinion, just no real MMA skills. Um, outside of striking, um, which they're going to need to keep this one on the feet or get some type of quick KO to win, I'm going to say uh, I'm going with Barnett. I'm going with uh, Barnett as well, just because he's the more, more explosive fighter. He more unpredictable. He has more ways to win than Tafa. I know if Barnett gets a hurt, he's going to take it to the ground. That you're not getting that man off you, and Tafa. You're only as good as your last fight, and last fight was not good for Tafa. Even if it was short notice, he did not step it up at all. And I, I'm just going with Marnet for that reason. I'm going to disagree with both you motherfuckers <laughs> because um, Tafa's the most more youthful fighter, obviously, you know what I mean, being the younger fighter. Um, he's got a better gas tank. I mean, not that Barnett has a bad gas tank. He just, he'll swing to the last of his fucking, like, his breath, I guess. But um I think Tafa's able to fucking box a brawler, right? So as long as you box a brawler and you brawl a boxer, you have a better possibility of winning. So like, I mean, good on y'all, but like <laughs> Tafa for the win. Okay. Okay. All right, moving on to the women's division in the straw weights. We got Corey McKenna going up against Julia Palastri. Uh, we got McKenna coming in three and two in the UFC, eight and three overall, three and two in the last five fights. Palastri coming in zero and one in the UFC, twelve and four overall, and four and one in their last five fights. I'm gonna be going with Palastri in this one. They're gonna be the longer of the two fighters, more experienced overall, just in general in fighting. Uh, they're a striker who can grapple, but. In my opinion, they're just going to want to keep this on the feet. That'd probably be their best route to victory. Uh, they're going to be pretty durable, have a decent gas tank. Whereas McKenna, they're going to have the more UFC, UFC experience of the two. But uh, outside of, you know, being kind of like a grappling specialist, they just really don't take me as like a killer or anybody that's really going to, you know, vie for any top spots in the women's division, uh, especially in the strawweights. 
Um, so they're going to need to get this to the ground as soon as possible. Otherwise, I just see them getting pieced up over three rounds or finished. Uh, but uh, So I'll be going with Pilastri. Who you got, Leo? See, I got McKenna. So I think her UFC experience is just going to help her a lot more. And um, Pilastri just... I think she lost her last fight. So I'm not really impressed with Pilastri. So I'm going with McKenna for that reason. Okay, for sure. That makes sense, but uh, you're wrong. Um, so I think Pilastri wants some more. You know what I mean? Just say what it is. Um, I think both of these women, female, I guess, like, I'm not sure how much we'll say that. Anyway, Bro, I think it's like, uh, I feel like their boyfriends have talked them into, like, fighting. What do you mean at by this that? point? Like they're, like, they're not really in here to do it. I'm definitely going to grab a beer while I'm <laughs> watching this fight because what the fuck? Why wouldn't I? Um, but I think Pilistri, uh wins it by decision at some point. After the third round. All right. That's quite the assessment. <laughs> Moving on. We got a bantamweight fight in the men's division. We got Dan Argueta going up against Cody Haddon. We got Argueta coming in. They are one and two with two no contests in the UFC. Nine and two with two no contests overall. And one and two with two no contests in their last five fights. We got Haddon coming in. They're making their UFC debut. Uh, 71 overall and are currently riding a five-fight win streak. I'm going to be going with Haddon in this one. Um, they're going to be the younger fighter. They're definitely going to have the edge in striking. Um, they got slightly longer of a reach than Argueta. Uh, and they'll have decent enough grappling to, I believe, at least practice defense from takedowns to be able to just keep this one on the feet. Um, and I just feel like if the longer they keep this fight standing, the more it plays into their hands. We got Argueta coming in. They're older by five years. Um, they're going to have the edge in the grappling. Um, but their gas tank tends to fade if they're not able to apply that grappling right away. And then pretty soon it just becomes a scenario where they're just diving at crotches all night. So um, I'm going to be going with Haddon in this one. Who you got, Leo? I got Argueta in this okay. one, and I'm I'm sticking with him just because of the grappling. I feel like the grappling is gonna be the difference in this in this fight, like it usually is. That's why grapplers rule the MMA series. I mean, Hudson, Hudson has a has a chance. I mean, them Australian fighters are really good. They're really good, and you don't mess with them. But I think the wrestling of Argueta is just gonna take take it over over the three round fight. Okay, so I have them winning the fight. Over decision. Nice. Nice. Who you got? I think Hatton is going to raw dog. Hold up. What? Raw dog Argueta. Like, that's his book and uh, his moniker, right? Like. No, it's not. That's, that's our guy right here. <laughs> raw dog. Right that's, the, that's the raw dog. No, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> no. Check I'm it. Not sure. Check it. Sure. We got... <laughs> I can't wait when this pulls up. I can't wait for this to pull up. We got Dan the Determined Argueta going up against Cody. No nickname. Haddon. So, right. you're in a completely different realm right now. <laughs> bend the knee. Bend the knee. Bend the knee. Whatever, you're right. Either way. Um either way, fucking Han's gonna win. Um he's definitely going to fucking raw dog his opponent hey, yo. into fucking submission or into a uh KO situation. And Hadden's definitely the fucking winner. How about that? You really needed to, to get that raw dog in there, didn't you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, super, find, super necessary. You had to find it somewhere. <laughs> you had to find it somewhere in this one. Even he masked with all the... Completely outside of <laughs> fight that that's going to take place. And it's all good, though. Anyways, my man, moving on to the featherweight division. We got Jonathan Pierce going up against Pat Sabatini. We got Pierce coming in 5-3 and three in the UFC. 
fourteen and six overall and three and two in their last five fights. We got Sabatini coming in. They are five and two in the UFC, eighteen and five overall, and three and two in their last five fights. I'm gonna be going with Sabatini in this one. They're gonna be the smaller fighter, but definitely the more dangerous of the two in the grappling. Uh, their hands aren't great, and their chin is a little bit questionable. But uh, I don't believe that Pierce is gonna, you know, get to be able to even touch Sabatini, uh, in that ma in that way that you know would potentially put him out by a KO. Uh, Sabatini is gonna get this to the ground. Um, Pierce, they're gonna be the longer and taller fighter, edging the striking. With some, they got some grappling, but it's not gonna be on the level of Sabatini. Uh, they're on a two fight skid currently, and just not not that great of a fighter in the at, at UFC level in my opinion um they're gonna want to keep this fight on the feet but uh yeah overall I'm gonna be going with Sabatini who you got Leo I also got Pat Sabatini I got Sabatini just because the, the wrestling like I said previously I think is the standard wrestler versus rap versus striker and wrestlers usually win so I got Sabatini probably with ground and pound honestly with the third round but I just don't see John, Jonathan Pierce stopping him, Sabatini's takedowns. Uh, Pierce has a good stand-up, but no takedown defense for him to stop it. For sure. This is the problem. Pierce has fucking heart. Pierce is a country boy from Tennessee. Like, this motherfucker looks like one of the people from fucking Deliverance. What? Um, in addition to that, like, this is a Mountain Dew swilling fucking, like, Appalachian living motherfucker, right? Like... I'm sure at some point he just makes moonshine on the side. What the fuck? Pierce is definitely gonna fucking win this fight because he's a fucking monster. And he's absolutely, like, ready to make shit happen. Damn right I do! I take Pierce. He's Catch you outside, guys. Great bucks. Oh my god. <laughs> right, the motherfucker better be faster than me. Uh, moving on to the men's flyweight division, we got CJ Fergara going up against Rosman Beck. Rama Zambek. Today, Junior. Timurov. Sorry, mate. Uh, we got Vergara coming in three and three in the UFC, twelve and five with one draw overall, and three and two in their last five fights. We got Timurov coming in making their UFC debut. 17 and 2 overall and are currently riding a nine fight win streak. I'm gonna be going with Timurov in this fight. Uh they're gonna be the younger fighter. Should be in my in my opinion, this is gonna be a showcase fight for a new recruit. Uh they're bringing in a tough opponent in Vergara, who they're gonna be the older fighter by six years. Definitely a UFC veteran at this point. Um, primarily a striker, durable, tough. Definitely a good test, uh, but mostly just here to put on entertaining fights. So my pick's going to be with Timurov. Who you got, Leo? See, I got Timurov as well. I think I like Vergara. I'm a fan of Vergara, but I don't. I like the Uzbek fighters. I like them. I think they're special. Most of them come out and they have really good records, as you see. And they're battle tested. They come ready to, to UFC and they come ready to, to bang it out, to make money. And uh, I think Vergara's a good fighter, and I do like his chances in this fight. But I don't think he has enough to to be next level. Just levels to his game, and I don't think he's next level. And I think Temurov's record shows, it speaks for itself. Maybe it's not the best fighter, but it's definitely a really, really good record. 72, 17 and 2 is no joke. No. Absolutely. This is the thing. Like, I, I, I can agree with you. But the thing is, is, it's not tested. It's not UFC tested fucking fighters, right? Vergara has definitely gone through UFC fighters. So, like, I've got to respect that. Um, strength of schedule, right? Like, that's basically what it is. Vergara has fought the best of the best, or some of the best of the best, right? At least UFC caliber fighters. And whatever his crazy-ass, wild-ass name is, has not done that. So... That's why I got to go with Vergara. I think he uh, just has a strength schedule on the next one. Okay. Uh, staying in the men's flyweight division, we got Clayton Carpenter going up against Lucas Rocha. Um, 
We got Carpenter coming in one and zero in the UFC, seven and zero overall. Um, we got Rocha coming in UFC debut, seventeen and one overall, and currently riding a six fight win streak. My pick's gonna be with Rocha. Uh, they're gonna be the younger, uh, smaller fighter, but way more dangerous as a striker. Um, they'll have some grappling, but outside of that, I just I don't have a lot to note about them. Same thing with Carpenter. Uh, they're going to be older and, you know, the taller, longer fighter. Definitely well-rounded, uh, hence the undefeated record. But um, still, just not a lot to note. So just given what I can see on paper, I'm going to go with Rocha. What do you got, Leo? I got Rocha as well. Just because his record is so much better than the other guys. And they don't have the UFC experience that you could really advocate, oh, this guy has the edge over this guy. I think it's going to be a really a good test for both of them. And we're going to see who has that next level. But it's really hard to pick this one just because they don't have the UX, UFC ex- experience. I'm going to say that fucking Rocha is a fucking fat, fluffy bitch. <gasps> like, look How at dare him, you? Fucking, like, looks fucking fluffy, my dog. Um. So, and in that point, I got to pick Carpenter. Like, because um, also... Um, Rocha's got to drop weight. He's literally got to drop weight for this fight. Like, you know what I mean? This is a real analysis. He's losing weight. I don't think he can do it. Like, you see them titties? And them titties is like some straight corn star titties. I'm just yeah, saying, though. You don't have no room to be talking about nobody. So they, they and one. Hey, yo, I'm also another fighter, my boy. Seventeen and one. If that's what. Seven and that's what. But it's fluffy not. Looks like, bro. It just. You want to be fluffy, then? Is that what you're saying? That's a that's He's a Brazilian, decent kind though, of man. fluffy. You're wild. Whatever, my dog. Right. Hey, bro. I'm you're just saying it's not idiot. right. It's not. It's. He's a fluffy ass dude. I don't think he's gonna be able to lose the weight. You know what I mean? He Too might much. suffocate him. He might suffocate him. He could. Too much but, rice but, in the yeah. diet. <laughs> My man Carpenter's making that shit happen. All right. <laughs> Moving on to the welterweight division. We got Chidi Njikwani, or Njikwani going up against uh, Jared Gooden. We got Njikwani coming in 3-3 three and three in the UFC. 23-10 and 10 with one no contest overall and 2-3 and three in their last five fights. We got Gooden coming in. They are two and four in the UFC, twenty three and nine overall, and three and two in their last five fights. I'm gonna be going with Gooden in this fight. Uh, they're gonna be the younger and taller fighter, powerful striker that can grapple. Uh, they're probably gonna prefer to stand in this one. They can fade, but I've seen them be able to push through that tiredness, um, and still even be able to maintain power throughout the fight. Um. If I was them, I'd, I'd mix in some of that, that wrestling with uh, the striking to tire Njikwani out. Uh, they're going to be the older fighter by five years, taller and longer, dangerous kickboxer, but really no grappling. Um, their chin and gas tank is, you know, a little bit questionable at this point. And uh, for me, I think that they'll need a quick, you know, KO or something flash for them to even win. So my pick's gonna be with Gooden. Who you got? I, I'm on the same board as you. I, I agree with Gooden, but I think he's gonna get it done on the ground. I disagree okay. with you on the strikes. I think his wrestling is really good, and he's gonna take advantage of that over Chidi. Um, I'm looking at and Chidi's most wins are through knockout. So he he only has four percent wins on submission. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take it as. Gooden's just gonna take it to the ground. He's gonna be a smart fighter. He's like he's a little bit younger, but he's still an older fighter. So he's gonna be smart about this, and he's gonna take it to the ground and just keep it simple. Decision. He's gonna do a decision win, just right out of time. Yeah, you motherfuckers is crazy wrong. Um, well, Op has had fucking crazy time off. Gooden like has definitely had mad time off. Um, and Gooden is just not that good. Oh, 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 you like that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, do that. Yeah. Dad jokes. Um, <laughs> and Jaquani has been active. And Jaquani, I think, is going to fucking end this fucking bout. Um, 
I don't think like crazy early or anything like that. Like it might be like a third round end or like a, a decision. But it's definitely not gonna be a good win. So it's not gonna be good for good. How about that? That's not funny. Okay. Alright, moving on to the welterweight division. We got Nico Price going up against Thimba Garimbo. Um, we got Price coming in. They are eight, seven, and two no contests in the UFC. Sixteen and seven with those two no contests overall, and three and two in their last five fights. We got Garimbo coming in. They are three and one in the UFC, thirteen and four overall, and three and two in their last five fights. My pick's gonna be with Garimbo. Um, they're gonna be the slightly younger, longer, and taller fighter. Uh, they're going to have the edge in the grappling, but have proven now to show some uh, power in the hands. Um, they got a decent gas tank, and I think as long as they mix up the wrestling with the with the striking, that, that'll be their route to victory. Um, Price, he's uh, going to be the older fighter by just, you know, two years, so not nothing too significant. Slightly smaller. They're going to have the edge in the striking most likely out of the two, but uh, they're gonna be weathered, you know, from just mad fights and just wars. Uh, they're chinny, but still dangerous if you let them stick around. So if he can keep this on the feet and find some type of you know quick finish or flash KO, then Price could potentially win. But my pick's gonna be with Garimbo. My pick's also gonna be on Garimbo. Just based on the grappling, his grappling, I, I've seen him fight, and his grappling is just superior, really good, really solid for his weight class. I used to be a fan of Nico Price, and I used to like him, but recently, you, you, you've seen age just catch up to him. You see him slow down. He's not the hybrid anymore. He's, the, he, he's not going to surprise you. I think he did win his last fight, but it wasn't very impressive, and uh, the, the fight before that, he lost pretty badly. I think it was against Lawler. Where he got knocked out. Yeah. Where it, it wasn't a very big hit. So I know his shin is a little s sus. So I'm a, for that reason, I think Garimbo is just overall the better fighter grappling and standing. So I think he has the edge over Nico Price in this instance. But maybe 10 years before Price had the edge over him. But I'm going to go for Garimbo okay. for that reason. Garimbo looks like... That's like, wild. Just, I'm cutting that. Right I don't give a now, fuck. I'm, not, I'm like, yo. Um, it's not an insult. It's just like, yo, this dude is a fucking beast. Like, this dude is going to fucking monster this man up. No way. It is what it is. I I agree. I think he's just gonna be too much of a man for Nico Price. Exactly. Yeah. Community guidelines don't care what you're trying to say. I don't give a fuck, my like, yo. A welterweight bout between Daniel Rodriguez and Alex Morano. Uh, we got Daniel Rodriguez coming in. They are seven and four in the UFC, seventeen and five overall, and two and three in their last five fights. I'm fucking still fucked up over here. Uh, we got Morano coming in. They're thirteen and seven with one no contest in the UFC, twenty four and ten with one no contest overall. And two and three in their last five fights. I'm going to be going with Rodriguez. They're going to be older by three years. Taller and longer with the edge and striking. Um, okay gas tank, but the only thing really that they got going against them is they're currently on a three-fight skid. We got Murano coming in. They're going to be a smaller fighter. Volume striker with some grappling and a, a very good gas tank. Uh, They're just weathered from a long ufc career possibly a little chinny now at this point and they're probably gonna need to tire rodriguez out 
and stay away from those power strikes to win. So um, I'm gonna be going with Rodriguez. See, this, for me, this fight, I'm excited. I'm really excited for this fight, and uh, this is an easy pick. It's Rodriguez all the way, just because he has he's fought better contenders. Yeah, yeah over time. Leo, give him some you want. Leo. <laughs> Morano, Morano has not shown me glances of of someone who is special. He has 24 and 10, but all his fights have been literally wars and you can only take so many wars rodriguez rodriguez you can see when he fights he he is more technical he is smart he's the a smarter fighter and he and he's gonna get this win and, he, and i think he has like five kids to maintain so his mentality is gonna be he has to feed his family and, he, and so he, for that reason he's gonna kill and he was born in 1986 just to top it off he and he has boom. a tattoo all over him boom that, 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 that dude needs, is bad. Yeah. That's a bad boy right there. You agree, right? I don't give a fuck about 1986. <laughs> hey, oh, 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 that's too much now. You stepped over the line now. We won't be talking that kind that's of shit. That's a day, well, that's a year that half my presents weren't my presents anymore. Um, <laughs> so let's go ahead and talk about Rodriguez versus Moreno. Moreno, um, y'all realize that uh, Rodriguez is dropping weight. No, he's not. Yes, he no, is. He's not. No, he's not. Look at it. His last fight, his opponent actually couldn't make weight. So they actually had to bump the weight up, and he had to increase his weight to make the fight happen because his opponent, Kelvin Gastelum, fucking was uh, not, not fucking disciplined. Well, so, let, let me so tell you So that's a this. one-off affair. He usually fights at welterweight. That's his fighting fucking weight. That is true. And, and he oh. stepped up to a plate when most people would okay. be like, you know, let me just impressed. say, let me just say that Moreno, the great white shark, is gonna eat D Rod. Pause. Pause. <laughs> the great white shark is gonna eat D hey, yo. Rod. Pause. Rod. Pause. Rod. Rod. Pause. I mean, you didn't make that any better. You. Are we are we ready to move on from this fight? No, 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 <laughs> no. I mean, let's hear how he's gonna get eaten. <laughs> you already oh did. My gosh, no, I mean, it's what it is. How is he gonna do this? Hey, just the like the way I said, it's gonna happen. He's gonna. Um, oh, oh, you wanna like you want submission like KO? Yeah, shit? yeah. How is he gonna do this? Because I, I I'm really actually really excited for this fight. I think this this is one of the easiest picks. Uh, on this card, Morano just doesn't have it, and sometimes you have to have it to be it. Brilliant, you know. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And Morano just—he uh, hasn't seen. He's fought really good fighters, but he's always come up short. All right, my dogs. I'm just telling you right now. Um, I'm gonna win this one. You know what I mean? And you do. You do got a good record, though. I said, yeah. You, you yeah. never know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. It's hard for me to lose. Right. It is what it is. Right. Let's go. Moving on to the middleweight division. We got Josh Fremd going up against Abdul Razak Al Hassan. We got Fremd coming in. They are two and four in the UFC, eleven and six overall, and two and three in their last five fights. We got Al Hassan coming in six and six with one no contest in the UFC. Twelve and six with one no contest overall. And two and two with that one no contest in their last five fights. I'm going to be going with Al Hassan in this fight. They're going to be the older fighter by nine years. Smaller, compact, powerful striker. Always looking for the finish. Decent gas tank, uh, but no real grappling in their arsenal. Um, so they're going to need to keep this one on the feet, which I think they can against Fremd. I mean, they're the younger, taller fighter. They have the edge in the grappling uh but i just i just don't see them being able to apply it i don't see them being able to get inside and take al hassan down um but that's what they're going to need to do to stand a chance in this one i just don't think that they're ufc caliber even at this point in my opinion so i'm gonna be going al hassan they're trying to make up for that fight they got robbed of winning in denver, denver against cody brundage so I think they're gonna get this one done. Who you got, Leo? I'm gonna have to disagree with you on this one. I'm gonna go Fremd. Okay. I think Ahasan, I believe is his name, uh, is too old. 
39 years old, you're, you're feeling you're feeling every day. You're feeling the training sessions. And I don't think he has enough, man. If you see all his wins, most of his wins, oh, I think all of his wins are by knockout. And uh, 14, like all his losses are by either decision or submission. And I think he just doesn't have the gas tank. That that tells me that he he doesn't have the gas tank to last a real a real long fight. I think he's the most dangerous in a in the first round. If if he gets it done in the first, if he wins this fight, it's gonna be in the first round. Yeah. But I think he just frammed. He hasn't really had the best showings. He's two and four in the like you said two and four in the UFC. But I think this is this is where he shines. I think this is where he maybe makes that turn in his UFC career, and I think he turns it up. And he shows what he's capable of. So I'm going to go with Fremd. I got to agree with that. Fremd has more routes to victory. And if uh, he does get a victory, he'll be a friend of mine. (laughs) I like that. I like Mm. that coach. (laughs) He'll be my friend too. (laughs) Oh, you ain't on that? Yeah, then you just robbed my shit. I said this shit back uh, with the five days. Denver. But I was saying he's not my friend. Shut the fuck up. You're not, not funny, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, try to beat up like old ass cast? You know what I mean? That we did. Whatever. I'm it's saying it right so now. Good. That shit's solid. That's all right. Noted. Cool. Yeah, right? It's Boom. Cool, bro. It's in it's there. It's cool. Huh? It's cool. What you want? Uh, I should actually be flattered. My apologies. You know. Oh, yeah. Because uh, Imita- is the best part of flattery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go fuck <bro>. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the lightweight division. We got Grant Dawson going up against Rafa Garcia. We got Dawson coming in 9-1 and one with one draw in the UFC. 21-2 and two with that one draw overall. And 4-1 and one in their last five fights. We got Garcia coming in. They are 4-3 and three in the UFC. 16-3 and three overall and 4-1 and one in their last five fights. I'm going to be going with Dawson in this one. Uh, they're going to be the taller and longer fighter. I believe, even though this, this should be a grappling fight, so in that case, I would give them the edge in that regard. But uh, they they can strike, but they're, they're not going to be trying to strike. It's going to be mostly just to try to gain entry for takedowns. Um, they got a good gas tank, and... You know, if they get those takedowns, they're going to want to look to control from the top position. We got Garcia coming in. Uh, They're going to be the smaller fighter. Uh, Grappling's their uh, specialty as well. Um, They can strike, but uh, I just think that this could be one of those scenarios where because they're good grapplers, they might just end up keeping this on the feet. In that case, I might give the edge to Garcia, but uh, if this goes to the ground like I think it will, I'm going to take Dawson in that regard. What do you think? I think I agree with you this time. I, I, I'm i taking Dawson on this one. I think it's going to be a standard grappler versus grappler. You've seen it versus Kamaru Usman versus Kobe Covington. Mm-hmm. It, their wrestling ca- cancels out. Yep. So it turns into a striking match. And I think Dawson is just that dog. Even though Garcia is Mexican and he has that style, I think Dawson's shown that he can he can win and he'll find a way to win. He has one of the latest stoppages, I believe, in in one of the fights. I, yeah. He won in third round when he was losing the fight, and um, I just think he has desire to win. So he's gonna find a way to win, especially because they're so such a similar fighter. Both of them are very similar. So I think Dawson's just gonna find a way to win, just because he wants to win more than Garcia. I think K. Hey. GD is going to gift an ass whooping to Rafa Garcia. And if you don't look up Rafa Garcia's fucking name and shit, you know what I mean? Just so you know what the fuck that means. Oh, oh the gift. Oh, okay, Rafa gifted Garcia. <laughs> nice. Glad you got one of those correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Round of applause. Round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> Golf clap. Dun, dun. <laughs> All right. Is that your assessment? Is that why you're picking Dawson? The nickname. Got a good the nickname. <laughs> <laughs> made a little funny. What more do you want? <laughs> I just called you. He said, if the shoe fits, lace it up and wear it. Lace it up and wear it, baby. What's good? <laughs> Come on. 
So that's it? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the nickname. Moving on to the co-main event of the evening. He got a middleweight bout between Brad Tavares going up against Jung Young Park. We got Tavares coming in there, 15-9 and nine in the UFC, 20-9 and nine overall, and 2-3 and three in their last five fights. We got Park coming in. They are 7-3 and three in the UFC, 17-6 and six overall, and 4-1 and one in their last five fights. Um, I'm going to be going with Park in this one. They're going to be the younger and smaller fighter of the two. Dangerous and powerful with the striking. Uh, okay, I don't even want to say okay grab. Their grappling is pretty bad. Uh, maybe because their last opponent was a high-level grappler, they just made him look crazy. But basically, if he gets you know on his back or is taken down any sort of way, it's going to get dark Like for a him. turtle? <laughs> a, little, a little bit. Yeah, I know. He's the iron turtle. Man, you're killing him, aren't you? <laughs> Uh, he's got a decent like a gas turtle? tank, uh, but he's going to want to keep this on the feet and close the distance. Tavares, they're going to be the older, taller fighter, but uh, they're just more of a decision machine, point striker. Uh, they can grapple, but prefer to stand mostly. Definitely weathered over the course of a long UFC career, chinny. Uh, but if you let him stick around... That's when they can, you know, tend to take over in those later rounds, get make it look a lot closer than it should, and mm-hmm. potentially even take over the fight. But I'm gonna be going with Park in this one. This, this this is simple for me. This is Parker all the way. I think, like I said before, I think these two fighters are very similar to each other as well. But you got the Iron Turtle. You got the Iron Turtle for a reason. He does not wither. He does not fade as the fight goes on. He gets stronger as the fight goes on. His gas tank is really good. And I just think Tavares has been in too many wars with too many good fighters that 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 at a certain point in your career just degrades you down. And, I mean, last fight he lost to to Rodriguez, to, what's his name? To the Iron Iron Uh, Cup. Gregory, uh, Robocop. Robocop, there we go, to Robocop. And Robocop is his specialty is the ground. And I know, I know Parker, Park, actually, has really gra- good ground game. He's done it before. He'll do whatever he needs to do to win, which is stand up and bang or take it to the ground. And, and I think for that reason, Park is going to take this. Tavares is just too old and too withered to, to really last this. That's great, baby girls. I love y'all motherfuckers. Like, uh, whatever y'all said, like, Cause none of it made sense. Like I wasn't even listening to that shit. Cause it doesn't really make sense. To be honest with you. Um. Let's see. What are we talking about? Bro, do you got a breakdown? Are you just gonna Brad Tavares? Like, like no, no. Together. I do have a fucking a whole ass <laughs> breakdown. Um, the Iron Turtle is going to look like a fucking turtle it's in this goddamn fucking uh a fight, right? You know, fucking turtle. Like he's gonna like just get flipped off on the back, and then just like not be able to move or shit. You know what I mean? Like, what are we talking about? Like, I can't even believe the fact that you guys think that that might happen. Like, yeah, Brad Tavares. Tavares has two subs in his entire career. I don't give a fuck. You think young, young? Like that sounds like a fucking like a like a crazy ass like a. a, a... <laughs> No, 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 potato. I'm just saying. But he's called the Iron Turtle for a reason. I don't give a. He's fuck. not called the Turtle. He's called I'm the Iron saying, Turtle. Brad Tavares is definitely winning this one. I'm not sure what the fuck we're talking about. Let's be honest with it. No, Brad Tavares could barely beat Weedman <laughs> with a broken leg. Okay, I'm exactly. just saying though. Well, I'm just saying though. Okay, <laughs> It could happen though. Right, hey, if there's not a fight up up for for question, it might be that one just because right. they're really I'm similar. Mm-hmm. Like if Tavares it. shows up and he and he can actually take Park down, then it's gonna be a long night for a Park. It's gonna be a really night. long night for Park. A long motherfucking night. No, and right. guess what? Who's the best at betting this shit? Me. 
I mean, well, yeah, I guess you can't, yeah. you can't, you can't, well, you can't disagree with numbers. Numbers don't lie. Numbers do not lie. What is we talking about right now? Numbers what are you talking about right now? Huh? Yeah, man, I can't. I'm gonna, you put, can't, I'm hey. gonna put such a good dent into this though. After, after this, you think point. so? Yeah, you're gonna be a significant dent. You think so though? We're gonna bring this down to single Bet. digits. We're bringing this down to single Run digits it, after man. this. Run one. it then, baby. Okay. <laughs> Watch him lose all these fights, dude. <laughs> you actually do it. All That'd right. be pretty insane. And now. The main event of the evening. Boom. We got the main event of the evening. We got the flyweights going at it in the uh, top five rankings. Or from looks of it, I guess the top ten. Tyara is just right outside of that. So anyways, we got flyweights going at it in the main event. We got Brandon Royval going up against Tatsuro Tyara. Mm -hmm. We got Royval coming in. They are six and three in the UFC. 16 and 7 overall and 4 and 1 in their last 5 fights. We got Tyara coming in. They are 6 and 0 in the UFC. 16 and 0 overall, you know, undefeated. So we got I'm going to be going with Roy Ball in this one. Oh, uh, what? Um, <laughs> they're going to be the older fighter by 8 years. Uh they're going to be the taller fighter. Uh well-rounded. Likes to strike. Uh, sets a high pace. Um, good gas tank. They're gonna be a dog fighter, hence the raw dog name. Uh, with you know a couple other you know uh entendres in there. <laughs> uh, super solid resume, and I feel like they should just keep this one on the feet and apply some uh pressure and volume, and it's all theirs. Uh, Tyar is gonna be the younger. Jeez, Louise. Uh, Tyar is going to be the younger, shorter fighter. Shut the fuck up. Uh, dangerous grappler. He's definitely going to have the edge and the grappling between the two. And he, he can strike, but grappling is definitely his specialty. Um, fades as the fight goes, though, if they're not able to apply that grappling effectively. Um, and they haven't faced anywhere the same competition that Roy Ball has. So I'm going to be going with Roy Ball in this one. Tyra is going to need to get this to the ground immediately if they have a shot, in my opinion, especially over the course of five rounds. Yeah, especially, like you said, especially over a course of five rounds. I think Royva has this. Tyra starts really fast, and he's really good in the early rounds. Now, I think this is, is this his first I think five rounder. Is, I believe this is his first. No, I think this is his second one, but he made quick work of Alex Perez. Yeah, which which was really impressive because Alex Perez, I had Alex Perez up really high mm -hmm. in, in that division, especially in that division. I had him probably like right under Royval mm -hmm. as, as the as the best in that division. So Tyra just kind of opened my eyes. I was like, okay, this this kid is not a joke. This kid is serious. You know, you don't see a lot of Japanese fighters rise up to the height that he has so yeah. quickly without having some serious skills. So that makes me a little nervous, but. My gut tells me to go Royva. I mean, he's been in there with the best. He's shown his skills. But it's just up to him to to show up. It depends where Royva shows up on that night. And then if we get the Royva who who likes to pop his jab, who likes to be active, and who likes to to did take the fight, then we're gonna have a good fight in our hands. But if we get the Royva who lets the his opponent did take the fight. He, it's gonna be a long night for Roy Ball. We've seen it happen before with Pantoja, yeah. with even with Moreno when he lost his first fight. Moreno dictated, dictated the fight and he won the fight. But the second fight was the different story. Roy Ball dictated. He lost the the first two rounds, but the last three rounds were all him. He he stepped it up just based on his coach's suggestions. His coaches were like, "Hey, you need to step it up. You need to start being more active." And he started doing that. And we saw his jab a lot more during the end of the fight. And uh, if he does that, he will take Tyra out easily. Yeah, so I'm taking Roy Ball decision. Okay. What? You ready for my? You ready for my yeah, fucking your turn? My turn. Yeah, is it my turn? <laughs> Let me tell you about my turn. It's always Roy Ball. Roy Ball is a taller, more seasoned fighter. He's a belt contender. He's supposed to fucking do this. Um, 
Young raw dog is about to do that shit. Make it happen. Like what are we what are we talking about? There is no discussion here. No, I, no I think we all agree on that. Yeah. I think Roy Roy Ball should take is this. a dude. They he should. should. He should. I mean, outside of him just like being off or something like that. Yeah. I just don't see how Tyra actually really There's no wins. Way. There's no way. Unless, unless unless his grappling is just so yeah. high level that he There's just absolutely not that yeah. shits on him basically. It's you trash. Know? I mean, Tyra's showing high level grappling, but. I think Roy, Roy Vall is is really good. Mm-hmm. The thing with Roy Vall, he just he gets caught up in the game, in the submission game, and he lets his opponent yeah. just, just take over the fight, just be on top of him, and that wins you a fight. Even if you're not doing anything, but that will win you the fight just because I, you're on top of the guy. I don't think Tyra is able to like um, um, dominate like that. Like you know what I mean? Just like lay on top of somebody like that. Yeah. Um, I think Roy Vall has better grappling and better uh, wrestling than that. I agree. I think I think Royva does have better grappling and, and and he's gonna get up. He's not gonna Yeah. yeah. If anything that Royval's learned from his last fights is don't play the, the jujitsu game. Don't don't get caught up in the submission games. And I think and he's gonna step it up. Is depending on who the fuck it is that they're fighting against, right? So And honestly, I think Royval, if he fights Pantoja one more time. He's gonna take. He's gonna take the championship. He's gonna take the belt. Oh yeah! Every time he has Roy, like I feel like in the later rounds he has Roy. He has Pantoja Mm -hmm. in a in a like a frenzy. Like he has him scrambled, but he he takes over so late that the fight's already over before he can really step up. I agree completely. And and that's what I mean. If he shows up hot and ready, and he's gonna be be active, it's gonna be a long night for Tyra, and he's not. he, He probably wouldn't even make it. All five rounds. Oh, I absolutely agree. All um, right. All right. Well, that concludes our predictions and picks portion of the show. Uh, We got any parlays? No. Parlays? I can make one in the top of my head right now. I have Royval, Park, Dawson, Framed, Rodriguez. Okay. And that's it. Right. Yeah, like those, those, those under those those those, quick beer. those bottom cards are, are really up right toss up. I'm not those, doing those are sure. I'm not doing parlays. No parlays from the parlay. Guy. Come on, you have to do a parlay. You're you're you're, you're hot, bro. You're hot. The parlay dude right now. So no 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 no. I am the parlay god. That shit is still real, still relevant. It's still relevant to this day. Yeah. Let me witness it. Anyway. So you want to see it? All right, I'm going to show you. Right here, right off the dome. Off the dome. Okay. So we're going Brandon Royval. Okay. Going, uh, Brad Tavares and... Shh. Go ahead and like scroll that a little bit for just a second. So you got you got Royval, you and got Park, you got Tavares, you and got Josh Royval, Frim. Parker. Those three, boom, is going to make it. And yeah. Dawson? No. All right. Brandon Royval. Brad Tavares. Brad Tavares. Brad Tavares and Josh Rim. No spices. No spices. No, no uh, left hook. No right hook. No spices. Right. No left hooks. No right. I got a little base for. I got a uh, Palastri, Haddon, Sabatini, and Garimbo to start. Bro, <laughs> oh, you really trying? Like dude, that's like spicy Dawson. It's looking spicy. Spicy Park. And if you're really trying to go for the fucking gusto. An extra, extra spicy Roy Ball on top of that. So, you should definitely listen to me because I got the breakdown. <laughs> Leo the Wise for a reason, right? <laughs> Leo the Wise. So, with that being said, we got our parlays in. No, wait, the Leo Wise got his parlays in, right? Yeah, yeah. he put his in. So, now uh, we're going to move real quick. I just want to let everybody know uh, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure that you follow us on IG at Bros Talk MMA. You can follow my bro here, R One Dot Mason. You can follow me at Utica underscore dot SME. Where can they find you, Leo? Yet to be announced. Yet Boom. to be announced. TBD. That's the second guest to do that. <laughs> I get it. I get it. We ain't trying to. Hey, I keep it low key sometimes, you know. Yeah. Uh, hey. Have those people you don't. You want, gotta move in the shadows sometimes. You, you gotta. You, know? you gotta move Shit. in the shadows. Uh, <laughs> make sure that you like, 
comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Um, real quick though, I want to give it up for our guest. You got any parting words that you'd like to leave us on? Not really, but I, I am thank I'm thankful for her having me in your show. I mean, it, it's an honor. It, it it's great. I like your show. It, it's a vibe. This, this is awesome. So awesome. I I wish you success. You know. Well, we hope to have you back for sure. You're gonna come Absolutely. back bro. for sure, for sure. If you if you have me back, I'll be back for sure. And, uh, well, like, tell me, tell me anything if you like good. Oh, good this is right great. Right. This yeah. is great, bro. This is great. This is like talking to the homies about some fights, which mm -hmm. is what I shoot for. So that's what's up. Hell yeah. Well then, uh, make sure that you check out our shorts. Make sure that you check out the clips uh, and the discussions. Uh, outside of that, though, this has been another episode of your favorite picks, predictions, and sports betting MMA channel, Bros Talk MMA. I'm your host, Utica, undeniably the illest cat around, a.k.a. Mr. Make This Pick Real Quick. I'm here with my bro host extraordinaire. It's Chackel Jordan. It's Ray Bucks. This motherfucking ask your mom about me. Hand me my belt. Give me my crown. I do the fucking best. What's good? And we also got my guy in the building. Leo the Wise. Young Leo the Wise. I love it. I like that. <laughs> Out here winning. I like that. I like that. It's grow that one's growing on me every time. Leo the Wise, bro. Like that's that's fire. That's some straight like Harry Potter shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like this motherfucker's about to like grab a little like wizard sticky shit and like Pose. Boom. Yo za. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, folks, uh, we wish y'all nothing but the best. Happy betting. And until the next time, we out. See ya. <laughs> ah, shit, I'm ah. <laughs>